Hello and welcome back to Lewis's Improv Vlog. This is number four and this is all about books. So two vlogs ago I talked about how I don't listen to music on the train anymore. I guess I want to be a more active participant in the world or at least a more active viewer. So what I have started doing instead is reading because you can still notice the things around you, your ear still perks when you hear something interesting or whatever but it still means that you've got some time that you're not bored. And I was yesterday reading this. TJ and Dave, Improvisation at the Speed of Life. It's a great book. So obviously it's written by uh, the improv legends, TJ and Dave. And in it, they say about how important reading is for an improviser. That it cultivates extra knowledge in you and that it teaches you a different way to use dialogue and to use words sparingly and things like that. So I thought I'd post here my top five non-improv books for improvisers. Number five, Louis Theroux's Call of the Weird. So I really, really like Louis Theroux. I like his documentaries. This follows the people that he met in Louis Theroux's Weird Weekend. And he revisits a lot of those subcultures. So do you remember the bloke who could communicate with aliens? He's back in it. He meets loads of these people again to follow up on them. And it's, it's really great because it, it delves in depth to these weird and wonderful people. And it reminds us how bizarre people can actually be so that when we're creating characters on stage, we're not creating just these normal, generic, boring people. These are people who genuinely believe that they can communicate with aliens or that they have these weird and wonderful things about them that completely make them different to most other people, but yet has complete logic and sense to them. So it's great for, for revisiting ways to make characters. Louis Theroux's Call of the Weird. Four. Book number four is Yes Man by Danny Wallace. I can't hold it here because I lent it to a friend about a year ago and haven't got it back. You know who you are. But it's great. I reread it every 18 months or so. So supposedly Danny Wallace was going through a rut in his life and he realised that that was caused by saying no to things. No, I'm not going to go out this evening. No, I'm not going to do this. No, I'm not going to do that. It means you end up doing nothing. So he decided to say yes to everything and went on this great adventure. And so the book is a really good way of seeing how that we can do that in improv. Obviously, when we're doing long form improv, we say yes to opportunities so that we can create a narrative. This is a whole book that wouldn't have existed without the power of yes. It's much better than the film. The film, I mean, the film's rubbish. Let's, let's not... Let's not make any bones about it. The film seriously sucks. But the book is good and I thoroughly recommend it to all improvisers. See where a story can go just by saying yes. Three. Harry Potter. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, but Harry Potter in general. For two reasons. One, they're pretty well-crafted stories. They're, they're nice to read and they're fun. But the biggest reason is because there are so many Harry Potter nerds out there. As you can probably tell from the wall behind me, I live with a Harry Potter nerd, so I don't say that negatively. Because these books came out and became really popular when I was probably about 10. I remember, I remember being in year six when I read the first one. And so millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people obsessed over these books and read them and queued up at midnight when the books came out. Do you remember that? Do you remember that happening? Do you remember the last time that happened for anything? Did that happen Fifty Shades of Grey? No. Thank God. But loads of people obsessed over these books and know them intricately and keep rereading them. And, and they really nerded out about them when they first read them. So if you read them, you're getting this wealth of knowledge that a large proportion of your audience have as well. So you've got this joke together. You've got these other things you can draw upon, especially if you end up doing a fantasy or magical type story. You've got all of these things you can go back on. You've got, you can start talking about Dementors and you can start talking about Nearly Headless Nick and all these other things, Horcruxes and these other things that people might forget. I'm not a Harry Potter nerd, but I know these things because I read the books and it means that I've got this wealth of knowledge behind me. Two, the Jim Henson biography by Brian J. Jones. It's a bit dense. I'm not going to lie. It took me a while to get through it and I love the man. However, it's a really interesting story of a man who just wanted to be creative. He didn't actually want to be a puppeteer to begin with. That was just a means to an end to get on TV. But he had this brilliant creative mind, a, th a mind that could turn something into nothing, a mind that could turn nothing into something and something wonderful at that. And it goes about his process and talks with people that made these things with him. It's a really, really good book. There are loads of great biographies out there, but a lot, loads of the ones that I'd recommend are 
about improvisers or improviser turn writers. So read this, it's not about an improviser, but it's about someone with a great creative ethos and someone who said yes. Number one, A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. Now, I only read this recently, I only finished reading this a couple of weeks ago. And I know if you look back in the last podcast, I told you all that I'm a bit of a physics nerd. And I am. However, Stephen Hawking has written this book to be absolutely and completely readable and digestible to anyone who... All you have to have is a really, really basic understanding of science. If you passed your year nine sats in science, you know enough to read this. There's only one equation in the whole book. The whole book only has one equation, and you've heard it before. E equals MC squared. Again, it's got all of this really specific information in a really digestible manner. And it's the sort of information that you can pull out of your back pocket and use in a show really, really well. There are so many other books that I'd like to go on on and on 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 and on 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 and on and on and on about. But I don't have enough time. But those are my top five. Read them. If you've got any other recommendations, comment below, tweet me at Lou H. Barker and subscribe for the next improv vlog.